Hey, our friends. Our collab is a monthly Zoomcast with Sarah Matthews and Natalie Callback. Each episode, we collaborate and chat about all stuff art related and topics that go way beyond that, too. So let's see what we discussed today. Like, welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. <laughs> hey, Marsha. Hi, Marsha. Hey, Marsha. Hope you're well. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. So good to have you guys back. Thank you for coming. Yes. So um, we're today without Kim, who helps us with links and um, stuff. She's on her vacation, touring some national parks like Yellowstone and the Grand Teton. And that's awesome. We're happy for her. <laughs> um, but that means that we have to kind of try to get our acts together. So bear with us. If there are any technical things and um, links that are not working, I'm the master of doing. Thank you, Marsha. I screwed it up last time when we did um, spill your heart already, but I will try to be better. <laughs> and then, you know, if you miss anything, then you could just watch the recordings later. Exactly. <laughs> So we will try to spotlight um, spotlight our cameras when we're doing the things right, Sarah? Yes, we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. Um, so I hope everyone is, uh, is doing okay and you all are having a good time. It's fall, which is not like, I know everyone was like, I want fall. And I'm like, no, no. No, I'm a summer girl. I don't like the fall and winter thing and stuff. So I'm like, it's darker, it's colder. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Carmen. So today we're doing um, Get Your Ink On. Get your ink on. Uh, get your ink on. Uh. <laughs> Are you, know, you doing... Do a whole song for that. I need to come up with the music and, you know. <laughs> you can put it into the recording in the beginning. <sighs> Are you doing Inktober? Yes, I, I did miss the first day because I was busy that day, but I did start on the second, <laughs> which is okay. You know, I gave myself grace, it's okay. And um, check my Instagram because I've posted a couple of things between yesterday and today. Uh, I did a letterpress um, calendar page for at Pyramid Atlantic. And then today I just took an old print that I did years ago and then did it the way I do it today. So check it out. Cool. Um, I'm not doing Ink Inktober this uh, month because I'm actually in and out uh, taking October off. So um, I, I'm Good only for here for the webinar actually at home. <laughs> and then I'm going to edit the video and I have some other deadlines that I have to tend to this week. <laughs> and then I'm going oh. back to the countryside this month. So I'm out. I'm taking a break. You need a shirt that says I'm here for the webinar. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just here for the webinar. And then I'm here. I'm out. I have got things to do. Exactly. So <laughs> while I'm having a little coughing fit, which I seem to have getting now, Sarah, why don't you tell us what's new in your uh, studio? And I mute myself real quick. <laughs> well, the first thing that's new, not te technically in the studio, is I got a new haircut. I chopped it off. I had intended to go to my hairdresser and get my locks curled. Um, but on the way, I thought about it. And I mean, honestly, I've been wanting to do this since I was 40 and I'm 44. So I finally um, got the gumption to do it. And when I arrived, my hairdresser was talking to her mom. And so she started prepping my locks and I would turn to her and said, 
just cut it all off. <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> and, and she was like, Ma, I'm gonna have to call you back. I'm sorry. My my person is like saying something crazy. <laughs> It looks amazing. So, yeah, and she added color to it too. So I really, I really am embracing it. And you know, I've got, I actually discovered that I have a good head shape. So I'm glad that I'm able to, <laughs> to do this. I was going to um, say you have a really, really. It sounds so weird to say that, but you have a really beautiful head. Like okay. you know, like because <laughs> like I guess when you don't have when you always have long hair you don't really know you know like, you don't know yeah that shape is right yeah i mean for the longest i just shaved the sides but i finally did the whole thing so very cool what else is new with you so the second thing is i am doing the gratitude junk journal um 2021 hosted by tr smith um the workshop will begin um on november 1st it's me along with 13 other artists. So you have a full month packed with different videos that you can watch. Um, and if you register now, um, you get um, through October 17th, you get Gratitude Journal 2017 along with 2021. So that's a good deal. Um, I'll put the link in the chat for everybody. Make sure I don't put it as host and panelists like I did last time. I actually right. changed it. <laughs> and then I'm also te teaching a Zoom and Make um, at Pyramid Atlantic online. Um, it's Pop-Tart books. So we take a Pop-Tart box and make a book with three signatures. So join me for that. It's October 21st from 7 to 9 p.m. That's, That's the it. second link. Awesome. Uh, I can't, I, I haven't been to the hairdresser, I should, but I got these really cool new earrings. I don't know if you guys can see them. And they are made by this uh, amazing Native American artist, Tyler Guateras. And um, she only posts like, hey, I'm having art, I'm having these earrings, like 10, 10 pairs. You can pre-order them and they're gone in like no time. And I was so happy that this time I got to get some. So I ordered those like three months ago and they came. Takes takes a long time for her to make them. And I love them. So this is, this is uh, in terms of like, anyway, uh, <laughs> what else is new? Not much uh, because I'm super, 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 super busy with Creative Jumpstart. Um, it's always um, a logistic, I don't want to say nightmare, but it is <laughs> it's a lot of work. I'm doing like website work. I'm working with the artists. I'm, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. And speaking of, um, there will be a, a Spill Your Heart uh, webinar special in uh, November. And um, that will be on a Monday, which is different. Usually it's on a Friday, Monday, November 22nd at noon. And I will reveal the artists. There will be a lot of artists actually coming to that webinar and show their face and say hello. And we are gonna play a little game as well to reveal them. And there will be also a free spot that you can win for Creative Jumpstart. And here is the link to uh, participate. And yeah, I hope awesome. you will join us. Um, and there will be no Spill Your Heart in October. Um, I said I'm taking off, but it's actually, <laughs> I'm taking off to really just do what I need to do with Creative jumpstart somewhere in the woods because I, <laughs> I need like zero distraction that's mm -hmm. all that's new here I mean it's boring <laughs> <laughs> but join me there this is how my life goes from October to basically January for creative jumpstart so um yeah and today we want to do we want to get our ink on we were talking about we wanted to show you guys um, what are our base, like basic favorite little uh, print techniques, not a class. So we just want to share some, you know, fun little things or tips. Um, and 
Uh, oh, Ulrika says you both are wearing great earrings. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and it's you. funny I... that we both took the beaded ones today, right? Yeah, but you know, I feel like my outfit is not complete without earrings. I feel, I almost feel like I'm naked without earrings. <laughs> I love earrings, but you know why I don't like fall and winter? Why? Because I wear scarves, and when I wear scarves, I can't wear long earrings. And they get caught in there. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Or you lose them. I have lost <laughs> so many earrings because then they were nesting on the scarf and fall out. So, yeah, you could say wear smaller earrings, but, you know. Anyway, weird problems that people have. <laughs> Ulrika says, I wore earrings for the first time in a year and a half on Sunday. See, this is cool. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thanks. So <laughs> let's, um, let's see what we got today. Who wants to start? Let's start. I start because it's a very simple. I start with the most simplest thing ever. Uh, okay, I thought mine was simple, but go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> Should we go back and forth? Like I have two things to show. Should we go back and forth or? Yeah. Well, you, do you show the first and then I'll show mine and then you show it again. I okay. think that's a great idea because then I can also clean up. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So see, let me get this straight. I also have a little problem because um, it's not a problem, but you will see what I mean in a second because can you see this yes. here mm -hmm. this is a tail and this is my cat bobby pratzel who loves to lay on the on the desk and i've <laughs> tried to put him down several times and he's like no i'm not having it i'm coming back and in fact he's laying on a rag right now so <laughs> i want to i want to show um, like a really simple thing that I like to do. This one is a, a foam stamp by Sarah, which is uh, cool. Sunflower. I love this. And sunflowers are my favorite flowers. And this is this is um, my hydrant. They don't really go together. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Sarah's for this one. And I love foam stems with my. Uh, should we? Should we highlight the video? I think they can't really see it otherwise. The one. Okay, I spotlighted it. There you awesome. go. Awesome. Okay, cool. So this is the sunflower. This is Bobby Pretzel's tail. Sorry about that, guys. And um, it's a little fuzzy because I cleaned it uh, with a baby wipe. But the most fun thing about foam stems, I always feel, is that they are so. Um, that they work with acrylic paint and I love working with acrylic paint. Oh, you know what, guys? I'm not really prepared. I forgot to put my brayer up on my desk. Run, run, run like the wind. You know, we can still see you like running up on top of the, a building. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what I love about um, about acrylic paints and foam stamps is that you can um, use them. I do also use rubber stamps with with my jelly plate, but it's a, a it's a bigger problem cleaning those. Although I clean my um, I clean my foam stamps as well. And then the simplest thing that I love to do is just lifting lifting paint off and layering it. Just lifting, taking the paint off is my favorite thing. And this is how I do most of my, um, like a lot of my collage paper is just that, where I make, I make collage paper by lifting off um, the paint by stamping into it. And I feel like, I don't know, it's just, you can layer this of course, but, and again, we are showing simple things, but I just love, I just love how this looks like. 
I love it. Right. And, mm -hmm. and then I cut these up. Like I, I just collect these, right? Here's one with the mm -hmm. hydrant. I just collect these. And then if I use a lot of the same colors, um, I sort them by colors and I can just cut them up. Sometimes I would cut out like a little, you know, like a little area here, or I paste this in my art journal and then work on top of it. And what mm -hmm. it does is it, it gives me more freedom of um, experiment with the foam stems and with the colors. And then um, I don't, it's not precious. It's just, it's just playing and exploring and I love when you get like little accidents like that, which is green here. It doesn't translate in the in the video, but it's like the leftover of some other paint in that. That's my favorite uh, printing technique. I swear I do a little bit different in the next one, but that I really love just playing with foam stamps on a jelly plate. So uh, I'm going to turn this off for now so we can go back. Whoops. Okay. And let's see. Now we spotlight. Yeah. This. All right. So today we're going to be working with stamp buddies. They are, I guess you would say, like an, an accoutrement to the art for me. And you can buy them in multiple, multiple sizes, or you can buy them in a package of like offcuts. So um, it was out. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to like semi mount these on this, I guess, Tim Holtz Plexi thingy that you would normally use to, um, you know, mount rubber stamps on. But I'm going to mount these on there with my double sided tape real quick, just to, just so it could hold on to, oops, there we go. I'm just gonna flex a little bit. I find that I'm messy. <laughs> so if the ink or paint comes, comes off, there's extra protection. So, That's and then when I'm, and when I'm done, I can just wash it with, you know, soap and water and we're good to go. So I'm using this so flat matte acrylics and I saw another artist using this and I'm like, I, I must, I must have this and <laughs> I must add this to my list of things to get, <laughs> you know, you know how like, it's like, oh, I must, I must get that. I have to, you know, to try it out because the one thing I don't like about, which is, I don't mind, but I don't like about acrylic paint is that it's shiny. You know what I mean? I like I like more matte. I'm gonna shake this up a little bit because it's a little watery. And I'm just pushing it in with my spoon. And I should have used. So Sarah, can I ask you a question that someone asked? Uh, Marsha asked that. Sorry, Marsha. <laughs> How is the smell of the so flat? I've heard they're stinky. Um, they smell just like. To me, like other acrylic paint. So, and I'm making a mess. <laughs> it's not as, I mean, it's stinky, but it's to me, it's not as stinky as, as say, like printmaking ink. You know what I mean? That's mm. what's really strong. But do they, uh, so not so bad, Marsha? Not so bad. Okay. Yeah, not so bad. Yeah. And the consistency is like a soft soft body almost a little bit more fluid when a soft, soft body paint. yes yes I would agree with that yeah okay. yeah they have been on my list for a while too but I'm like oh, hang in don't <laughs> try it, <laughs> try it. <laughs> all right and I'm using <gasps> Natalie <laughs> foam stamp and I'm just gonna Aww. push it in all the way across. All right.
very cool with the two cup. Oh, look at that. And then you have this graduation in the middle. Yeah, because it's, you know, two primary colors mixed together. <laughs> very cool. Yummy. And then um, I don't know if you guys know that my some of my foam stamps are four quarter repeat. So like say this bird. So you go in and then you just turn it. So up, right? This is so cool. Down. And left. Let me just repeat it. And you have several of those uh, quarter repeat stems, right? With yeah. ponies. Mm -hmm. There's fun. Yes, fun. And um, there's a love stamp too. So, yeah. Very cool. And I and then I love these. This is like it's like having a stamp pad, but it's you know with paint. Very, very cool. And the cool thing is like, you can put those, um, you can put those in a Ziploc bag. If you know yeah. you want to print like a couple of days later without washing all the paint out, if you still have paint on there, right? Yes. And I also got these cases, um, plastic cases from um, Amazon. So I could just put it right in there mm -hmm. and close it up and close it up. Kind of like, I mean, basically it's a Tupperware case, you know, if you think about it, it's just plastic. <laughs> So yeah. I love I love using that as you did um, either for cards, but I also love to make um, like wrapping paper. So like yeah, the holidays you just go into like production mode. <laughs> you can do so because it's full of of paint. You can do multiple you know passes with it without having to refill, and that's what I like about that. You know right. All right, your turn. Oh boy. Okay. Um, let's see. Start video. So far, so good, right? <laughs> yeah, we're making it work. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, replace spotlight. Here we go. There we go. So um, the other thing that I like to do about a gel plate is, so this is my, um, for example, my. Um, uh, Lady Liberty stamp, uh, foam stamp, but you could also do that with the row houses that um, Sarah showed, um, what I'm going to show now, but what I like about is using the back of, an, of a foamy, right? Mm -hmm. So with Sarah's mm -hmm. stamp, for example, I wouldn't need to use the gel plate because I can just use a color, uh, stamp the circle, right? And then stamp with a different color on the pattern side, with the pattern side, and step on that circle. So I love to use the back and the front, but if you have a design like this one, um, that's gonna be a little bit pro problematic because it's reverse. So what I love to do with the uh, gel plate is using it to my advantage to reverse uh, the image. And you can even um, mix colors uh, by doing that. So let me let me show you before. I talk too much and you're like, what is she talking about? <laughs> she hasn't taught, taught a class life in a long time now with the pandemic, right? <laughs> so um, my plate, this plate here is still a little bit new. So it pearls, which I actually, I love that. I love that um, sediment. I think it's oils on there. Um, I'm sure Marsha knows best. Um, so what I like about this is when I put it on top of here, uh, it makes these little, um, almost like crystalline, crystallizing um, effects. And I love that. And then I'm going to ink up my back of the stem with a different color making sure that I get all the edges that define this. And then I can stamp 
I'm going to use where it's a little bit clearer right in here. What it does is layering those on top of each other real thin, it actually mixes the color and gets like a, instead of the, um, you know, the nickel azul yellow with this, um, with this green here, it will get a, a, a nice different green. So let me print this. Did you mean to choose green on purpose? Because you, she is she is green. Yeah, <laughs> well, her. I mean, you yeah. could use different colors that mix well, of course, as well, right? So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I was like, let's go for it, ladies. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm lifting this up. It's a little fuzzy. She's a little fuzzy here, but you can see the outline, right? Let me put my uh, plate away for a second. Yeah, Marsha confirmed firmed its mineral oil. And then because I will dirty up myself, you take off some of the paint already. But now I can stamp either with acrylic paint into uh, this, or I could use um, the, like a, an ink pad and just ink her very well up. I love to use the foam stamp also with, uh, with a normal ink pad. Talk, 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 talk. Here we go. <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> yeah, right. And now, because I printed her, I can, uh, you know, reverse, I can really print inside that outline and use this as a little offset. I'm going to put my face right into this. But here you go. So you have a different colors. I hope you can see that on the camera. Yes, very cool. It's not that bright, but you have a different colored green because we mix the colors and then you can use that. Um, so you have both sides. Um, here's one that I did earlier, which is the same one as I tested, but I come, came out a little bit better. And I love how the background uh, looked with this minerals from the, from the uh, plate and you can, you know, now I can use this into my art journal and refine it and stamp more on top, um, whatever I like to use. So this is it. This is, these are my two favorite, very basic uh, printing uh, techniques. And Marcia said, this is a great idea and that that distressed look looks awesome. Yeah, and I think um, Marsha, uh, can you, I think Marsha, Marsha is part of um, the um, Jelly Arts uh, team, and she does all these like amazing tutorials, you should follow her, Marsha Falk, if you don't yet, um, but she also, oops, I didn't want to do that, uh, remove spotlight, um, you can, you can get this look back, I think, right? by mm -hmm. using, um, I'm not sure, I guess mineral oil, just use mineral oil and put it on or a baby plate. or baby oil too. And that way it, it'll smell good. <laughs> so, okay. What you got, what you got for us? Oh, well, I went on ahead and used the flat thread on the orange and I like the contrast with the colors. Um, Very cool. But it dries pretty fast. Like I didn't even put um the heat tool on this. It dries really, really fast. So Marsha, sorry, just to say what she just wrote. She said, yeah, I think any oil will work. Olive oil, vegetable oil, baby oil. So you can get that look. I know some people hate the, the, the distressed look. I love it and I'm sad when it's gone. So use any oil to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got, well, I guess I could give you another one. Oh, so I've got these old um, 
tags that I made a long time ago. And honestly, it's like before the, before the time that I started making layers. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna still use your, let me raise this up, your stamp here. And And then I'm going to push them together, make sure that they're good. And I do so this sometimes when I'm uh, when I'm lazy, like <laughs> just put them all together, and then print with them. Let's keep them together. I like that. And then upside down. Oops. And then upside down. Oh, I like the upside down. I almost feel like I need to like get more of that in there. There you go. So I love the lines in your stamp that it creates. So, so now all the old stuff <laughs> is made new. Nice. Do you work with a lot of tags, Sarah? Um, not generally. I just have a bunch of them because that one carved December where Julie Faith on Balzer like was doing tags. So I just bought like a case from Amazon and I've had them for three years. And <laughs> you know how we are. <laughs> we just <laughs> we just save stuff and keep reusing it. So um, but no, I don't generally use tags. I really love um, it. And, and it, um, Ulrika also said uh, the, those red circles fit right in. And Marsha said, I love that this shows that you do not have to stamp the whole image all the time. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. Like, um, it doesn't even matter if you can read it as a house or row houses or not, or if you can yeah. still read the circles or the um the fruits underneath right it, it becomes something else yeah i'm really liking this flat paint i don't know about you guys but it's just i'm gonna go buy all the colors now <laughs> oh boy here we go do not tempt us. Honest, yeah well Honestly, before we did the, the April Art Foamies Challenge, like I didn't work with acrylic paint very often. And that was my challenge to myself. And I feel like I love how vibrant the colors are. I'm not saying that um, printmaking ink isn't, but I feel like you get a more crisp color with acrylic ink or paint than with printmaking stuff so yeah I mean what can I say I'm a I'm an acrylic paint nerd and you <laughs> challenged me to use more ink pads which I you know haven't really used uh, before with my uh, foam stems I mean I love using foam stems with all kinds of um, media but other than acrylic paint that that's usually just for fun you know like I will always go back to uh, acrylic paint and and use it with that yeah so um these were these were um some of our basic basic techniques that we just wanted to show you using a uh, printing techniques not the gel plate was not the the star it was just the uh, um printing in itself right yeah get your ink Which, on yes Ooh, look at that 
<laughs> wow. I'm just, yeah, playing around. And I, a lot of my work starts with play first. Yeah. Um, it's like a warm up, you know, trying it out, see how it goes, and then do the serious stuff after I've gotten the technique down. <laughs> Well, I think part of it is like, once you get so messy anyway, like once you have all that stuff out and you dirty up your foam stems and everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then then you might as well just keep on going and do all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah. Gigi says, after being a pretty dedicated watercolor user, I've just started playing with acrylics. Love, uh, really love what I can do with them. Yes. Welcome awesome. to the dark side. <laughs> like, welcome to the team. <laughs> yes, exactly. And there's a, I mean, there's so many acrylic paints that you can use, um, which is, you know, um, the flats that um, Sarah showed. I have, I, I have, uh, what the green, the dark green that I used actually, that was, uh, let me show you, that was, um, whoops, that wasn't the right one, but this is uh, actually an acrylic wash. This is from Jelly Arts, um, their paints. And then I used a golden too. I also use heavy body paint uh, sometimes, so, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, you just try it out, whatever paints you have. Um, yeah. And then just, you know, go from there. Um, so that that's the fun of it. But we wanted to show you a little bit how you can use your foam stems um, to um, get your ink on. And yeah, on and your laptop too. <laughs> yeah, I got it on my laptop. But what I was about to say is like, don't be afraid to like go to the craft store and sometimes they have like those cheap 20 cent bins and just like grab all of it, <laughs> all the acrylic paint, no matter what their brand is and just play with it. I mean, I had lots of fun with the Martha Stewart um, paints from like Michaels, um, the, what is it? Oh, the folk art is pretty good too. So this is the cheap stuff and it works really well. So. Just try it. Yeah, especially when you're just playing too. I feel yeah. that there is, um, you know, there's no real need to spend or use the most expensive colors. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a little, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, right? If you're, if you want to do a painting or you want to have a print that, that lasts longer or whatever, in the end, you might want to decide onto something else but when you're playing just playing like just use what you have and even use the yeah. cheap stuff um yeah it's not gonna make a big difference in your your print result as you know and it's like a, the photographer is still the one who's making the taking the photo it's not the camera right right and it's not like someone's gonna walk in and say you use the folk art <laughs> No one's gonna know. <laughs> well, I feel sometimes really? that, especially in the mix, like because we are all coming from this like craft and art, um, you know, um, background where we work with different co companies, and while we are loyal to certain companies, it also takes away a little bit of that experimental uh, thing. Like if you, I mean, like. A Rosenberg or whatever Jasper Jones when they did their mixed media art, they didn't give a two cents about you know how long the stuff. They're like conservators are gonna deal with that. It's not. They didn't yeah. even think about conservators. They're like that's <laughs> their problem, right? Like we don't uh, we don't think about the longevity of whatever <laughs> we use, right? It's like I'm keeping them employed, so exactly. go at it. <laughs> right, Marsha says house paint, whatever they got their hands on. Exactly. Right, right. When we're like, available. oh my God, for the rest of our lives, this needs to be like for someone. It's like, really? <laughs> like, don't take the fun away. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and check out the thrift stores. They sometimes have, like, I found substantial art kits 
um, that somebody donated and, you know, I added it to my, my stash. And then there's this place, I live in Maryland, but there's this place called Scraps in Baltimore where, mm -hmm. which I wish this was available like everywhere where you can bring like your old stuff donated and then get, you know, new old stuff. <laughs> So I was like, you know, I don't like this kind of stuff anymore, but you know what? I want to dabble in this and go and get it. And I, I find that like, I wish there was more of those kind of places. Maybe one day I'll open up one myself. I also like, um, that's pretty much how I approach things too, is like when you have a new medium, like you just get one or two or the primary colors and, mm -hmm. then, um, and then try it out. Like I, I buy the primary colors, try it out. If I like it, I buy it. If I don't, I'm like, okay, at least I didn't like crazy overdo uh, right. budget, right? And you don't feel bad. I mean, you shouldn't feel bad either way, but it's not as bad. <laughs> well, it depends yeah. on what kind of colors you buy, right? If you buy like yeah. really high quality art, artist paints, and they're even like, um, you know, based on the pigments and they're priced in different ways, right? Golden has that, for example, for some of their high quality paints, then you're like, okay, I didn't pay like an arm and a leg for the, my favorite maybe colors, but they are not my favorite art material to use. And I figure that out after I bought all that stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. I well, like the, I like those little um, actually those little for example the gouache um, for, they these are the small ones they are from a little mm -hmm. like kit and you know when they came out they sent me this I used to work with Liquitex and they sent me this to test it out and it was really cool because then I mean if you even if you buy it you're like okay I can try it and see if I like it. And, right. uh, and, you know, like, um, do I like the gouache? I do like the gouache. Do, would I have bought them all after I tested it? I'm not sure yet. I have to see once they are empty. But given that I have those for a while and they're still living, means I don't grab them as often <laughs> as you might right. think, you know. <laughs> Gigi says it's a great idea. I didn't think about the secondhand stores as a source. Okay, so we showed you what we wanted to show you, but are there any questions that you guys have for us? Put them in the chat as we're not that many people today, that's not a big problem or in the Q and A. Is there anything you have as questions about our printmaking um, uh, stuff? By the way, I just wanna point out my background. This is a coincidence. This is a painting of those row houses that Sarah used them <laughs> as the stamp. So I made the painting and then um, I decided to um, create a stamp uh, from that. That's the one that um, Sarah used. So that's a coincidence yeah. that I showed that. There you go. There it is. <laughs> I love it. No one has questions it. for us. Do we no one, no like, one wants we... to know anything. Do we blow their mind with get your ink on? <laughs> uh, Gigi says, I was wondering about the foam. Is that a specific type of stamp or? So um, the foam stamps that we used here are the ones that we, um, we designed, Sarah and I, for a company called Art Foamies, um, which um, is here in the States now, it used to be in Canada. It's a small family owned um, business. And Sarah and I send our designs in and then they create uh, foam stems from them. So we're licensed designers as many other people uh, for that uh, company. So the foam is the special um, art foam is foam, but you can make your own um, foam stem. So Sarah's gonna yeah. show you that. So you can buy the sticky back foam from any craft store. And so you can cut out the shapes. And then I just glued mine onto cardboard, but you can make your own foam stamps. That's actually, 
recently, no, I have it here. Um, I actually made words, <laughs> you know, with my foam stamp. So sometimes I will try something out on these first before I make my final design. But um, yeah, these are, you can buy them in a stack of like a hundreds and then use them. But I like to use the sticky back because it's just easier. You don't have to worry about glue or anything and um, you can get it done pretty quickly, so. Yeah, I think these are like really good to, um, when I teach classes, I love to also say like, you know, if you're making a very generic uh, designs like stripes or, you know, then it's really cool to make them yourself and you have them in your stash and you can use those over and over again. I have those foam handmade foam stems uh, for a long time too. Um, they're, they're pretty, like they hold very long actually. Um, and then um, Ulrika also asked about uh, the stamp body um, mm -hmm. that you uh, we both use, but you used in this demonstration. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, this foam you can get from any, also in a craft store um, in rolls or sheets. And then you could just buy anything, cardboard or whatever, and mount it on. So it's not like, I don't know. If I'm saying that because if you don't have access to like art foamings, you'll be able to get this, this foam from any craft store in a roll. Yeah, or you can purchase it from art foamies in different cut size. Um, the yes. most important thing about those, however you're gonna uh, do is um, you have to, um, you can't let the paint dry in them. So they no. will um, harden if you do that. So once you're done using the paint, I will put it in a Ziploc bag and then reuse them a couple of like in a couple of days or wash them with lukewarm water out until no paint comes out anymore. And I also have on my website, a couple tutorials on how to use the um, stamp buddies um, for example, you can use a stamp. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but you can see it on the website. Is like you use the stamp and you stamp with a, a chival ink into the foam, into the stamp body, um, mm -hmm. and then let that dry. And that way, this will create the outline of your stamp. And you can actually like make sure that you have colors in just certain areas, right? It's a little bit hard with that stamp that's down here, but for example, with Sarah's stamp, if I would go and um, stamp that on a stamp body, I can make sure that the circle in the middle is, for example, magenta, and then just the rays, um, because I have outlined it on my stamp body, are in uh, yellow, right? And so every time I stamp on my um, on my stamp body. I get the same ink and, and I'm very refined in where I put the paints. So they're really fun to use. There are different ways on using them. Um, so check it out uh, there. And then there's another question from um, Tina who says, when you made the rubber stamp last time, what block did you use? That was Sarah, I guess. Um, so I guess- Yeah, I used, I used the Speedball um speedy car it's the pink stuff let me see if i can find the link so that i can put that in there right i'm gonna see if i find the link for the art phones as well um let's see. here we go we need kim kim <laughs> <laughs> But we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> we're good. We're doing it. <laughs> Just be patient with us. <laughs> so Sarah found her link. Thank you, Gigi. Gigi just say that said that she um, always takes away. Um, so many tips and tricks. I we hope so. I mean, there's a lot. Mostly, it's discussions and uh, conversations that we have. Um, but and we enjoy that, and we hope you will, you enjoy that too. And if you take something away, that's always uh, a plus. 
Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Marsha said she has created some of the um, foam stamps in some of my classes and she's still using them even though she did them years and years ago. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're really cool. And you can also mount them on, let's say, uh, a paper, a paper, um, paper roll. Um, What's that called? Paper, paper tissue roll, kitchen roll, right? The the insert. Oh, and you can mount them okay. on there, and then yeah. move them a um, toilet roll. Exactly, toilet roll. toilet roll. And here is um a post that I did about how to use the stamp body, which is a little bit different from what um it's the stamping with the acrylic ink, for example, how you can use it. So you want to check it out you can do that there. So yeah, that was it. Um, that was fun. Uh, yes, it was. So Sarah, mm -hmm. what is our next topic for November? Do you remember? Yes, it's about gratitude. Ah, because it's in the States, it's, um, it's gonna be Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And we fought showing gratitude. Sometimes you have people in your life who have been a big part of the journey that you're on today. Maybe they mentored you somewhere near the beginning when you sense when your sense of direction wasn't yet clear. Perhaps they were there along the way, helping you to make important choices and to see the possibilities. Maybe they got you back on track when you swerved and faltered. And we want to acknowledge those people in our lives and talk about the incredible impact they had, um, they have had in making us who we are today. Nobody is on this journey alone, and it is time that we spent a little time showing gratitude. And yes. this is the registration link for you guys. So we are actually making some things for that too. We're not going to show how we make them. We're just going to show you the results and we will talk about the people that are the- Inspired us. Inspired us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then that will be our last, our last one, not forever, but just for- you know, two, two months, we're going to take a break, but we'll be back in February. So yes. don't worry. We're going to come back. We're coming <laughs> we're back. We're not letting break. <laughs> we're, we're here. We're here to stay. But we were <laughs> thinking that December is a super busy time for everyone. And uh, then January with New Year is a very, very busy time. Oh, she was worried for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no don't be worried no, we're coming it's back it's a second break we're coming back <laughs> what we would love to hear though um which would be great would be um again this is this is like a podcast zoom cast so this episode is a little hard when we put that up as a podcast you're like okay you know for people later if they want to hear it at the podcast it's almost impossible but what we would love to hear from you is like some input so email us like what topics would you like us to discuss or uh, what kind of format that we have showed before uh, were like your favorites if you have been I know some of you are regulars um, you know what would you like to see us do more is it more like or is the mixture right because we did all kinds of stuff we exchanged things and showed what we did right uh, and cried and, and cried. cried we <laughs> cried like don't say cry every episode don't make us do that right uh what else did we do oh we had like very deep discussions about yes. very important um things that are happening yes. to influence us um, we had one guest we had one guest right yes. is that a format that you liked or is that mm -hmm. and is, is it okay just to see our little faces in the screen do we do, should we invite more guests once in a while? Um, or is the podcast not that important to you and you want to just see more of us doing? Although I have to say, I'm not really these short, like, 
I, like I can do the basic, but I'm not like, I'm not teaching 10 minutes or 20 minutes live uh, things like that's mm -hmm. not quite my mm -hmm. thing. Um, so, but we would love to hear what you, what you enjoyed and what you would like from us uh, in the future a little more yes, so please. that we can brainstorm, right? Yes. And to bring you more good content. <laughs> yes. So just swing us an email and yeah. So Gigi says already, I love the mix of the sessions you have done this year, a little bit of everything. Thank you, Gigi. Awesome, thank you. And thank you guys for coming back um, and yeah, taking time with us and um, making us like, uh, we feel accountable. Yes. <laughs> I just, you know, when I look back, when we initially talked about doing this and yes, there was lots of butterflies, but I'm really glad that we stuck it out and did it. And I'm really enjoying our conversations every month. And hopefully maybe one day we'll do this in person. Oh, that would it be out so there. Yes. awesome, wouldn't it be? Like if yes. we would be actually in the same room. Oh, right. goodness. <laughs> right <laughs> i think the cool thing about it is like i'm looking forward to this because um as we're both getting busier again too um we also don't have that much, like we often called each other and talked just for fun but we actually haven't talked since our last we no. didn't text as much because we were both so crazy so busy, busy. <laughs> right and so this is like this is like a real treat because it's like yeah we put this time aside but we also get to finally talk to each other again yes although we should text more again too we should <laughs> she's like <laughs> i know i just like i i have been completely swamped but it's a good thing though it's a good thing and i'm i'm i am uh gracious <laughs> and thankful for this but um I am tired, so I am tired, but I'm gonna press on, right? You're gonna press on, and gonna we're gonna on. see each other on the other side, and it's gonna be fine. <laughs> exactly. Well, I see you in November. I see all of you in November, and yeah. uh, but just send us a little bit of a feedback. We would love to hear so that we can brainstorm in the break after our November session what our next topics are going to be. Yeah. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>